Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp, and in the news today, uh, Josh Cook dyed his hair. Kind of. Kind of. I, I got that uh, that one day stuff, like that you put in, you can wash out after a day. Nice. I love that stuff. It's easy to put in. You get a party store, or whatever, whatever it's called, it's like Party City, Party America. Yeah. They've changed their names like five it's, times. It's kind of easy to put in, but I have like too much hair. Yeah. And my hair wasn't. Like, Do you have too much hair? My hair wasn't. I'll trade enough. you any day of the week. Um, well, I, I mean, I'm not ready to you know trade it in yet, <laughs> but um, I, it's it's very you know hard to put the stuff in. Um, I was just testing out before MizCon, yeah, because um, I'm using it for a costume at MizCon. Nice. Yeah. Well, it looks really good. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some new stuff. i got a guest here today, and um, Hayden Groach. She's from Watching Children's Shelter. They're talking about Bike for Shelter. I'll have her on here to talk about that. i got Flagship Friday video of the week. i got uh, some uh, no city council because city council was off this week because it was a fifth uh, Monday of the month, and they usually kind of uh, have a bye week this week. And uh, I have your art guide for your first Friday. i got pre-critic. I have a whole bunch of show, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's going to look very nice today. 64 degrees is going to be your high. It's only going to get warmer from here on out. Saturday is going to be 67 to 68 degrees on Sunday. Your lows are going to be in the high 30s to low 40s. Just look at this wonderful weather. It's going to be mostly sunny. Um, it's just going to be beautiful. And MCAT's going to be doing a parklet just outside our um, building. So right, right behind me is where our awning is and in the front entrance of MCAT. Um, and we're going to do a parklet where Asaf Adonai will be here. And then later tonight, we're going to have a First Friday deal where Asaf is going to be showing a lot of his um, made and produced videos here at MCAT. So we're going to check all that stuff out as well. And you and Neil are going to have to tear down today. So yeah, you're, you're yeah. good on that? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, it's just, you know, just have to come by, you hang out, and then all you got to do is just take down the awning and maybe move the piano back down here with making sure it doesn't, like, fall and fall crash because it's, it's a ramp. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We got that on lockdown, and uh, I believe I'll be at that booth tomorrow morning. Or is it tomorrow morning? Uh oh, yeah. Tomorrow morning is a whole other booth that we'll set up. Yeah, yeah. So that's a whole other deal. But I'll be able to help you tear down because it's only going to go from ten to twelve because it's the farmers market tomorrow, and I'll I'll talk a little bit more about that during an event. So. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the news. Flood thy neighbor. As one man tries to prevent fl flooding on his own property, uh, their neighbor incurred damages from the flood's rerouted path. Judge Leslie Halligan said it appears that Cody Moore's diversion of the seasonal creek uh, is flooding Jim Brock's property and basement, resulting in significant increasing water damage. In the Missoula article, it says that regardless of preventing water damage on your property, any adjacent properties must have the same preventative measures. Basically, if you start a burn pile and you burn your neighbor's house down, you got to pay for it. Insurance usually doesn't cover uh, acts of negligence on the neighbor's part. It usually covers acts of God, um, which includes like lightning storms, you know, flooding. But if you are a person who directly or indirectly causes uh, damage to another person's home and property, a lot of times the insurance will not cover that kind of deal. So you got to watch out for that kind of thing and look at the fine print as well later on. So Brock wrote uh, that he tried to contact Moore multiple times, um, including retaining a process server who delivered a letter asking him to contact Brock, but never heard from his neighbor. Judge Hall Halligan set a May 15th court date to hear legal arguments on the temporary restraining order and whether it should be uh, converted into a, a preliminary injunction to remain in effect while the matter is litigated. In state news, Northwestern Energy is warning customers that there's a scammer out there looking to get some quick buck from people. Um, so what they've been doing is they've been calling uh, customers and saying that, hey, you're late. We're going to turn off your power. Call this number. And then they force you to call that number. And they 
and as soon as you call that 1-800 number, they demand payment up front. And usually how it works is that North Arizona Energy basically sends you uh, notices for months in advance before they send you a final warning. But it all has to be in the mail in their letter format. A lot of times they don't actually call you ever. So that's just one of the things that North Arizona Energy is telling you guys to watch out for. And most of Montana is Northwestern Energy. You know, the only other place in Missoula is Missoula um, Electric Co-op. So yeah. watch out for scams. You know, there's always a scam. There's a scammer a minute. Um, if you watch John Oliver, they did a, uh, a thing about scam, right? Remember yeah. seeing that? Where basically uh, a guy who f was fast talking on the phone, who was just pretending to be the, the son, was basically saying, Mom, can I get your social security number? And it was just like kind of right, right away without even knowing. And she gave the social, her social security number away. So you got to watch out for scams. Yeah. People I, want you to do yeah. something right away. Don't do it. I barely even answer my phone these days because like half of the calls that I get are scams. And robot calls. Yeah. So I do most of my stuff by text. Uh, it really is. And then, Facebook and if honestly, if it's important, they'll leave a message. Yeah. yeah that's I true. mean, like you, you know, if you don't recognize the number, don't answer it. Just that's just a rule of thumb. And also don't, quickly uh, like you know ignore you have to let it ring out go to the answering machine and then they'll usually leave you alone after a while but if you actively don't answer that number they know that you're actively not answering it because there's a certain amount of rings the algorithm works so you gotta watch out for that yeah. get a lot of ring out even if you hate it but you know just put your ring on silent when it happens all right let's talk to some national news attorney general william barr has uh, become the center of controversy when he was a no-show at a hearing about robert Mueller's report he said was not as bad as the actual report the justice department released a letter from Mueller to Barr dated march 27th in, in which Mueller states that Barr's that Barr's summary did not fully capture the content nature and substance of the office's work and conclusions which Barr replied to this letter was a bit snitty. Um, Wednesday, what? he showed, yeah, S N I T T Y. That's what Barr said about Mueller. Weird. So, yeah. So, anyways, Wednesday, he did show up to be publicly criticized by a committee of, uh, for 15 minutes of partisan accusations, countercharges, and, and, and theatrics before adjourning. Uh, Jerry Nadler, U.S. Representative from New York's 10th District Congressional District, said he would hold Barr in contempt of court if he does not release the full unredacted report to Congress. So that's what's happening in the news. I kept my guests waiting a little bit longer than I intended, so um, I'm going to throw it to some art clips, and then when we come back, we're going to um, have Hayden Groats on here. We're here with Hayden Grove. She is the program coordinator for uh, Washington Children's Shelter. And you're here to talk about uh, Bike for Shelter. Yes, thanks. Your annual fundraiser uh, and <laughs> also uh, basically celebration of everything Washington Children's Shelter, right? That does, yeah. This event is super important. It is a fundraiser for the shelter, but it's also uh, just an opportunity for us to get the community together and um, everybody with their families and do something fun. So, yeah. Nice. So what's different about this year? Oh my gosh, this year there's going to be quite a few different things. Um, probably the biggest is that this is the first time that we're offering it as a free event. 
um, and that wouldn't have been possible without over 50 sponsors that we have this year. Yep. And um, one of your sponsors, Montana Railing, yes. has been sponsoring you guys for pretty much ever. From the beginning, they've been our premier uh, Big Wheeler sponsor, and they also uh, host um, and organize the entire barbecue at the event, so make sure you stop. Um, that's free as well. Everything for the entire event is free, including the barbecue and MRL organizes all the volunteers for it, and they cook and serve and everything the entire time they're there as well. Awesome. Yeah. And you, um, you have mini carnival games yeah. and mini uh, things <clears throat> happening there. And of course, the big bike ride is kind of like the staple of yep. Bike for Shelter. That's the thing that starts off the entire event. So you can come, you can do the 10-mile bike ride if that's your speed, or if you're more comfortable, there's a two-mile loop as well um, that often the little kids do, but adults can certainly do it as well. And you've been um, host, and this has been hosted at a Community Medical Center. Yep. Uh, kind of like that uh, large kind of patch of land that they have just adjacent to the, the building. The lawn just in front of Community Medical Center, yeah, and also in front of one of our two buildings, nice. our house at Fort Missoula. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's right in front of that shelter. So. Nice. Yeah. So um, Washington Children's Shelter has been around for many, many years. And it was started by uh, um, Janice Watson, Janice was our Watson. founder 42 years ago. Wow. Yes, yep. Um, are you guys doing any kind of, um, so Bike for Shelter, how long has it been going on for? 19 years. 19 years. So next year will be our 20th year. Nice. And, and the really cool thing is, like, you, since you have so much support from the community and fundraising and and it's free. Yeah. And this is like the first year it's ever been free. Yep. So what were some of the costs that were uh, the last couple of years? Oh, it's always just, um, gosh, I mean, actually, like, costs for the event. So this is a fundraiser for the shelter, and primarily we get that through sponsorship. So some of the costs are just carnival games, uh, food for the barbecue. Mm -hmm. This year it's exciting to know that a lot of that was donated as well. Um, and so... Yeah, I mean, it's not um, a huge expense, but there certainly are some costs yeah, that course. come along with it. The shirts that we like to give everybody for the event. Um, again, some of the, the vendors that come through, um, just things like that. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, you just, you know, offset a lot of costs <clears throat> and stuff like that. But, of course, there's always a goal. Yes. What is your guys' goal uh, for this? So, about $60,000. It's about 10% of our fundraising budget every uh -huh. year. And um, so this is the goal for the event. Nice. Yes. Yep. And you guys do pretty well most of the time? Every year we've hit that goal. So fingers crossed we do again. I think that it's going to be, I don't think that it's going to be an issue this year. Um, everything is on track. Like I said, we primarily get um, the, the money that we get comes through sponsorship so we, so we know ahead of time nice. kind of what, what to expect. So let's tell uh, the folks who at home how they can register. So I yeah. brought up their website. You go to WashingtonChildrenShelter.org. Yeah, thank you. So if you go to special events um, or even just click that big banner when, once you get on the website. Yeah, and then you'll take you to our website, and you can sign up right there. Um, and this just kind of gives us an idea of if you're coming to the event. Um, but if you're not sure, because there are so many cool things going on in Missoula, um, we are doing registration the morning of the event on May 11th, starting at 8 a.m. Nice. So you can come and sign up and register um, pretty much um, until the first bike ride, or even 11 o'clock is when registration closes. But if you want to bike, get there before cool. 9, I would and say. And of course, you know, um, it happens pretty much um, from about 9, 10 a.m. So registration opens at 8, um, and then 8 till about 1 o'clock. Our events are happening the entire day. Bike rodeo, carnival games, the barbecue, both bike rides, um, live DJ, everything like that is going to be happening that entire time. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Because um, it's pretty straightforward. This has been going on for 19 years. Yeah, just um, check out our website, WatsonChildrenShelter.org, and it'll have all the, hopefully it'll answer all the questions that you may have. And if you don't, feel free to reach out to me, um, and I can answer anything for you. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks, Hayden. Yeah, thanks really for having us. It. Me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know, you're with Watson Children's yeah, Shelter, thank so you. us. Of course. All right, so uh, we'll be uh, right back right after this. Kubrick, I think, almost anticipated uh, this, this problem, and the Moon movie that he created uh, kind of reinvests before the fact, before it's lost it, uh, some, some manner of aura, um, some sense of uh, the Moon as a stepping stone to, to unknown you know, future possibilities out there uh, in space. Um, and the way he handles the Moon generally definitely does uh, invest it with a certain kind of uh, grandeur and uh, and perhaps uh, a touch of the sublime uh, as well. Uh, it's interesting that uh, one of the Apollo astronauts, after he got to the moon, said uh, it was actually quite boring uh, compared to Kubrick's film, and I wish it was much more like that.
Because for us to be effective, you need to trust us. And we must earn that trust by proving that, that we strive for both accuracy and fairness, that we approach stories with open minds and no agendas, that we seek out and listen to all views, that we avoid even the appearance of impropriety in our work and in our lives, <laughs> that we act responsibly, especially when writing about private people who are unwillingly thrust into the news. That, that can be a really terrifying thing. I mean, I know what it's like when people want to write news stories about me, and I do this for a living. You know, a lot of times people are going to be diagnosed with what can be treated in that setting. So a child might present with leukemia, but they just keep getting treated for malaria because they're presenting with fevers, weakness, and anemia, which are similar to the symptoms of malaria. So leukemia and malaria might be really late before a kid actually shows up and gets a diagnosis of leukemia if they make it. Um, uh, there's a lack of medical specialists. At the time that I was there in 2000. Seven, um, there was one neurosurgeon for the entire country. So, and he, had, he can't be on all the time, right? So there was one neurosurgeon, so if you had any kind of head trauma, your chances of survival are, I mean, almost nothing, unless that neurosurgeon, one, is available and you are rapidly diagnosed and, and near uh, a hospital where he could operate. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking about some ugly dolls, and I'm not talking about the toy, I'm talking about the movie, which is going to be selling toys about ugly dolls. Probably. Cause, you know, it's always a cash grab for movies. You know, like how most movies are, just like, eh, buy our toy. Boom. Okay, the, uh, the best movie, Reverse Tropes of Beauty. Uh, too bad these aren't one of them, because we're looking at a cash grab for toys that celebrates stuffed animals, and a boss baby kind of vibe with the music musical it's, it's basically musical even though i didn't i whatever yeah. anyways mm. this movie is about a group Beautiful. of dolls as they look for a place to belong besides the bargain bin at the insert here store so you can build a bear but you cannot build an original plot a pit bull yep he's in it uh the long shot uh speaking of ugly we have a hot presidential candidate risk here risk her career for a funny fat hipster guy hey seth rogan is in it and he's not that bad looking he's he's pretty he's a pretty good looking guy he's kind of like he's kind of like a bear anyways and he makes some good he makes some good movies um you know this one kind of looks like it's kind of dumb you know it's a romantic comedy um you, you know you you know what you get anyways uh they make fun of politics and the media that watches every move be besides who they do instead of what they do uh charlie Theron plays a woman who dates a guy who are kind of funny and funny looking, she really, she really gives a lot of love to guys like us. Really, she really does. She, you know, Charlize Theron, she's beautiful. She gives a lot of love, a lot of love to the rest of us guys out there. So, anyways, um, okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. The long shot. It's a movie. Did and you just compare me to Seth Rogen? Yeah, oh. I compare myself to Seth Rogen. We're, we're guys like us. <laughs> we're in it together, bro. I'm not gonna reach out my hand. You should reach out your hand. Nah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to you. You gotta reach out your hand, dude. Reach out your hand. I'm gonna recoil my Re hand. Re hand. Re reach out your hand, bro. I don't know about stuff. Reach out your hand. Ah! <laughs> Get out of here. Fine. All right. Well, let's talk about the intruder. Uh, remember Dennis Quaid? Well, he's an older guy in uh, Dog's Purpose and other things. But in this movie, he plays that old guy who wants you out of his house. Uh, but not your wife, because she reminds him of his dead wife, whom he probably killed. And he will probably kill your wife. So watch this uh, uh, more expensive uh, Lifetime original movie about a man uh, who built his home from, you know, from scratch for his wife. And then you have a family that moves into this home because you can't, the kids, you can't pay the, I don't know, I guess he did a reverse mortgage. You listen to Henry Winkler and you're just like, okay, whatever. But of course, anyways, this is kind of like a buyer beware kind of situation because no good deed goes unpunished, especially like in a Lifetime movie. Anyways, so this is the kind of movie that you can expect. It's called The Intruder. Dennis Quaid's in it and things happen. Like in most movies. All right. 
So I have a couple announcements I got to make uh, for MCAT. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything MCAT. We're doing uh, summer camps this year as well. So if you are interested in doing any of our summer camps, you can check this out right here. Uh, it, we, you click on the link on the picture, or you can go to How Do I? MCAT summer camps, but also we do a lot of event recordings. Of course, w I did show you uh, Media Assistant Grants um, programming. So the program at MCAT is considered through the Media Assistant Grants program that offers uh, free um, video production quality um, for your events, causes, or rallies. So it is a great opportunity. And I do have, uh, also I have a little something for you guys as well. Um, I have another, uh, promo I wanted to kind of show before I jumped into it, and I'm going to I'm basically going to let um, Austin take it away. So take it away, Austin. Hello, MCAT is offering four summer camps to kids who are interested in everything media, from stop animation, documentary filmmaking to a full zombie feature film. Your kids will learn how to make a movie from concept to filming and the editing process. We have counselors that will help your child's vision come to life, but they're only limited by their imagination. So, sign up by logging on to MCAT.org, or stop by at 500 North Higgins Suite 105. What's <laughs> And that's pretty much it. <laughs> What'd you think of that? Well, uh, that was pretty good. I didn't know that was what you filmed yesterday. Like a movie. Yeah. Did he, did he say it was Zoom? Yeah, he totally said it was Zoom. Do you want me to play it again? Yeah, wait. Wait, hold on a second. Just gotta line it up. Ready? Here, here it comes. Yeah. I've was <laughs> That's pretty great. Was so was so was so. Hey, yeah. So I may use that when I was so was so was so was so was so was so. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. All right, and disappear. Okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, I was sick this week, and now I'm all phlegmy, so cool. bear with me. Uh, I'm looking forward to wearing that exact same headset very soon. I have another headset. No, that's fine. Huh? It's a good headset. I mean, I put it adjacent from my... I'm going to sanitize it before I put it on. All right. Yeah. I doubt he's going to sanitize it. I don't want the whooping cough. The wh whooping cough? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the whooping cough is still around, so you got to maybe want to check for it because it's spreading whoop. around, especially it started at Central High School, and there's a lot more cases of it, so you want to be careful of whooping cough. Just, uh, you know, a rule of thumb. All right, so um, I did some pre-critic. Um, I kind of uh, did a, a segue to some MCAT-related things as well. But right now, it is Friday, and every Friday I talk about the, we do the Flagship Friday video of the week, and this one is about epic pranks. So without further ado, here's Epic Prank. Hey, did you hear of that girl that went missing? Yeah. Maybe we should try and track her down. Yeah. Okay, I'm finished. Please don't judge me. Don't judge me, please. Um, but what do you think? This will do. Hey, 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 hey. Have you seen this person? Have you seen this person? Yeah. Hey, have you seen this person? Yeah. Have you seen this person? Who drew this? I did. <laughs> Hello? You think it's my drawing? No, not. Who's that? Do you think that's her? I wouldn't take any chances. Let's get her anyway. <laughs> oh no, I don't think there's no time! Where'd you go? Where'd she go? What are you guys doing? We're chasing that missing girl. Why is she missing if she's running away? Oh. Maybe she turned into that drawing? We have to find her. No. <laughs> no, we don't have to 
find her if she's the drawing. Yeah. <laughs> She'll come to us. Yeah. Oh, how about this, guys? Wait, where's the other guy? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to save him. Would you just let go. me go? Let's go. There's no help for them now. Doing nothing is like running over a cat on purpose. I'm going to go get the office. Two more people have been missing. We need to call the cops. Hey, guys. Are you okay? Guys, hey, guys, are you okay? Ah! No! Oh no! Ash! Huh? I think I know what this is. This is the picture of the missing girl. What is this doing here? Ah! 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 No! 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 Ah! Wait, what's going on? It was a prank! Why did you guys do this? Oh no, I don't have to pay the Is this what they really think I look like? They're gonna put it for this. Oh, how about this guy? So they think I'm a terrible driver. And I'm going to go with them. You win? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, because of this. What? I'm just a bad artist? I was looking for you. You weren't missing. I wasn't missing. I was sick. That explains a lot. Why are you guys here? Because it was funny. funny. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're going to talk about your uh, first Friday art guide. If you're, I don't know, I just got loud at that last point. I guess I'm trying to get you to listen to me. Let's uh, let's talk about some first Friday stuff. Um, with love from Montana. That's kicking off your art walk. It's at LA Design Chem, uh, celebrating a new body of original work by Montana's legendary artist, Larry Perney. Uh, Friday, May 3rd, from 5 to 7 p.m., experience the color and passion of Perney art and visit the artist in person. Four Ravens Gallery is also doing a thing called Tiny Voices. Um, Four Ravens Gallery is a place where you can buy a lot of the art and a lot of cool things as well. Eric Ryan France Simmons is a metal artist who uh, graduated from the Cranbrook Academy of Arts and Long Names, one of the nation's leading graduate students for our, I added the last part about names, uh, gra schools for architecture, art, and design. Simmons has lived in Missoula for six years and has been divorced from the art world for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to go somewhere. I thought it was going to go somewhere, too. Okay. But that's what it says in the synopsis. But this show is his reconciliation with it by creating art for himself and having fun with it. So basically, he did art, he quit art, and then he's back at art. He's using still. Simon brings a warmth and a vibrance to this cold and rigid material. And this is going to be at the Four Ravens. Gecko Design, which is right next to Pie Hole, uh, bright, vibrant floral paintings will uh, compose a majority of this show to encourage spring along uh, it's not a sing-along, but it's a spring-along. Additional, uh -huh. the Missoula International School will have a presence at, for the annual Missoula Gives event. Stop by for some great art, great company, and great times, and donate to the Missoula International School. First Friday, Berkshire Hathaway, they always have an art exhibit, but this time they're having um, Tom uh, Schnartz, um on Friday. The subject of how an experience impacts and brings that alive to the viewer work is primarily in acrylic and watercolor. It tries to tell a story of a simple, direct way and often include subtle elements that enlarge the story and further engage the viewer. Nice. First Friday, Playing with Fire, and this is Yvette Kajurud. Um, Glacier uh, Shobi International Reality. First Friday, Reception with Artists, um, showcasing um, Eucaustic paintings and uh, monotypes and minimalist jewelry. Artist shop, scenes of Egypt. Marion Nosai. Uh, Marion Nosai is a visual artist based in uh, Har Harina, 
Egypt and Missoula, nature and the simple lines of the uh, pharaonic art inspired her paintings. She used watercolor, natural pigments, and materials to create a uh, fresh coast on gypsum. So if you know what the, all those words mean, good for you. You're an artist. Um, First Friday, Mixed Media by Tracy Hall. Lake Missou- I don't know why I'm so bitter today. Anyways, That's okay. It's just one of those days, man. It's, it's not that I'm bitter. I'm just like, eh. Just, it's like, yeah. I'll, I'll rush. I'll, I'll get you guys to this art. Well, I, I did see that exhibit, by the way. Really? The, the mall part, you know, like the... I saw the Egyptian like art that the middle schoolers did. Really? Um, yeah, it's it's all around the mall right now. Oh, that's really cool. It's like hieroglyphs, hilo hi, 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 hieroglyphs. They, yeah, they've got like you know um, mummies and stuff and like Egyptian death masks. Oh, and, and that's at the mall. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, cool. You can just like walk through and check it out. Oh, mm-hmm. that's another uh, cool place to stop by if you guys are interested. Tracy Hall is doing some mixed media at Lake Missoula Tea Company. Uh, artist specialized in surreal illustration, comics, and graphic design. She graduated from the University of Montana in 2015 with a degree in English and creative writing. So honestly, I think that this would be good for Rowan to go check out. And also, apparently Rowan um, Graham just told me, he emailed me the other day that they're going to be doing a dude I just drew on May 11th and May 18th. Ooh. So there's going to be a double dose back to back. We've had a basically a three, three week hiatus and I just got to give props to Graham. He's really kind of stepped up and he's really kind of filled a lot of those spots. And this will be episode 11 and 12, which will wrap up our final season, our first season of dude I just drew. Rowan was telling me that he's uh, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, moving on to another thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wants to go to a different college, and I can't blame him. Yeah. All right, sure. but he, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So, he, you know, dude, I just drew. So, that's what's happening. Uh, Maxine Beard is going to be at Upcycle. Hey, babe, let's all just get a little closer and know each other just a little bit better. It's a quote, not what I'm saying. Uh, come eat and drink in some magic with local artist Maxine Beard and take a peek at her newest collection of surreal recycled wood and paper art. Um, actually, that's this thing. My bad. I'm going backwards. That's it, Maxine Beard. So let's take a, a quick look and just kind of enjoy some of this art. The one that I showed before is called In the Weeds, obviously, and it's by Ariel Goodman. First Friday, it's going to be at Benice's Bakery, and uh, come see the embroidery scene on linen and cotton made with a thread and roving, a modern take on the ancient women's craft that this, uh, this collection celebrates freedom, amenity, and the inkling of spring. All right, we have uh, figure drawings. Um, this is... Uh, this is the Gallery 709. Um, exhibits feature drawings by students from the Missoula Fine Art Studio taught by Tara Chapman and Marilo Malone, who studied in Florence, Italy. The show runs all of May, and it kicks off tonight. And last, but certainly not least, at the Radius Gallery, love the Radius Gallery, love all those folks down there. Um, from 5 to 8 p.m., the new exhibit, Often I am permitted to return to a meadow featuring works by Julia Galloway and Stephanie Frosted. Uh, both artists have a connection to poetry, so they selected a show from an uh, influential poem by American modernist Robert Duncan. It explores the tension between reflecting on past artist traditions even while pushing against and even breaking open those established borders. We think that an especially um, apt theme for the complex and forward-thinking projects these boundary-bursting artists have undertaken. There you go. There's your art. But you got to go check it out yourself. There's are some of the, there's, that's your art guide, you know. You, you just go downtown, a bunch of storefronts are open, just walk right in, hang out. But also, one of the things that happened on First Friday is that here at MCAT, our own musical uh, prodigy, I don't know, I just keep, I just want to say it, but... Um, um, Asaf Adonai will be performing uh, at a parklet just out front of our building. Uh, we're going to have some things set up, which can be kind of chill, kind of a cool area to kind of come by, play some music. We'll try to lo- do a live stream from the corner as well, so you guys can check it out. And we'll have the official event happening from about 5 to 8 p.m. tonight. Um, and it's going to be uh, featuring Asaf on piano. And also he's going to be showing some of his uh, produced works here at MCAT. He does a, a um, stories with Asaf. So he talks about that and more. So, okay. So that pretty much does it for all your art clips. Uh, I have another art clip for you uh, produced by our very own um, Rick Phillip. And in, here it is. Got to delete that. Okay, here it is.
All right, guys. Now let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. You already know about all your Friday stuff, but there is a rummage sale happening. The uh, Holy Spirit Church. Um, I don't. I'm not going to say that word. But anyways, it happens from 8:30 to 3 p.m. and it also runs on Saturday from 9 to 1 p.m. Um, it is holding incredible rummage sale, thousands of items, treasures for everyone, and the most incredible prices ever. You won't want to miss this event. That uh, yeah, it's a rummage sale. Check it out. And it's happening now, and it also happens tomorrow. So why not check it out? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? You like you like thrift shopping, don't you? Oh, yeah. Um, I usually look for music things, you know, like pianos and yeah. little synths and stuff. I see nothing but pianos on the Facebook uh, marketplace. It's ridiculous. And they're usually just like like uh, collabs. Oh, yeah. I should I should definitely look for There's some. a lot of them. And, and they're also like kind of like the uh, kind of upright pianos, but they're, they're, they're like the old claps where it's like, uh, I don't know, what, what's that called? Um, Non-electric claps. Oh, analog. Analog? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. No segue. Missoula Gives Donor Lounge at the Art Park. Uh, just so you know, Missoula Gives is happening. It's been happening yesterday and ends today. And at the Art Park, which is right next to the Rainbow Crossing by the Missoula Art Museum, they're going to have your um, coffee, donuts, and you can support Missoula's largest community-wide fundraiser, fundraising event. Last year, they raised $420,000. Hopefully, this year, they're trying to raise half a million dollars for a hun over 165 nonprofits here in the Missoula area. Well, also at the same time on uh, 415 North Higgins, Missoula Gives Blood Drive. Come donate blood to save lives and give back to your community at the Missoula Gives Blood Drive. The American Red Cross will have its mobile red uh, blood drive located. Um, it's near Sushihana. Uh, reserve a time to donate today, and you can help get a goal of 20 pints of blood or more, which is easy. You know, you donate blood, it's great. You know, even my blood type, which is AB positive, the universal receiver, can donate its uh, protein pallets to help people along the way. Because when you're a universal receiver, you can't give blood to anybody else, but you can take everyone else's blood. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah. laughs> it really is. Like, it's really nice to be AB positive. It's rare, which is awesome, and it's a good talking point. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, I can take anyone else's blood, just like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, if I'm dying, virus. give me your blood. Yeah. Either you're O, B, A, A, B. You owe me some money. Give me your blood. Give me your blood. I'm Sweet. good. I need some of that young blood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, as you get older, young blood helps. It doesn't yeah, help with the rats. Scott's actually about like 100 or so. Yeah. I just take all the blood from whatever I can get. Yeah. Like, honestly, you, you produce a, a, you know, like you get a pint of blood from a person a month and you can get a new pint of blood later on. Yeah. There's, and there's plenty, there's plenty of blood fish in the seas. Anyways. <laughs> Tiny Tales and story time. Speaking of young, those kids get to learn about reading and um, all sorts of things from the Missoula Public Library every Friday at 10.30 a.m. It is a great and wonderful opportunity they do at the, uh, the Dragon Rug, Rug in the kids' area or they do in the big board the big uh, board room in the downstairs area. Hands-on science, another opportunity for kids to go to Spectrum Discovery, and they're going to be learning about color and light. Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center, if you want to go to lunch and destroy some people at Cribbage and or Bridge, go there at, at around 1230-ish, and they also have a thrift store in their basement. Endeavor, Endeavor is a, as I like to think of it as a, a parental um, education co-op, they have afternoons, afternoon kid activities and parents meet and greet, Legos and board games, and it all starts around 1.30 p.m. And, and Legos start at 2.30 p.m. YMCA family fun time from 3.30 to 5 p.m. One of the big events that uh, YMCA has been doing as of late for First Friday from 6 to 10 p.m., they do a parent's night out, and it's $27 per child, or if $21 if you're a Y membership. It's fifteen dollars for every additional child, and of course ten dollars for so it's like twenty one dollars for a child, and if you have like twenty ch children, it's like a hundred and twenty dollars, one hundred and twenty one dollars to have your twenty kids or your hundred kids or whatever. It's a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids. Some people just just can't stop. Just just can't. Just won't stop. Yeah. 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 Anyways, that's what's happening, and also Jazzilla is happening tonight as well. It's at the, uh, uh, it's off of Tremont Street. It's that church off of Tremont Street, and they uh, usually have uh, a wonderful uh, turnout for this kind of thing, and it celebrates everything jazz. They used to kind of line it up with the, uh, the Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival, but Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival has started earlier and earlier every year, and Jazzilla is kind of doing their own thing now, which is great. More jazz, and have, instead of having jazz in one big thing, they have jazz at different parts of the year. And I love jazz. Who doesn't love jazz? You like jazz? Yeah, you like jazz? I like jazz. <laughs> you like jazz? Yeah, man. Yeah. 
And that's pretty much it for uh, your Friday because I already told you about your art walk. Saturday, big Saturday deal because Farmer's Market is officially started on Saturday. I don't know why I banged on my desk. That's Ooh. not nice to it. Farmer's Market, knickknacks, patty wack, give a dog a bone. Bring your dog, but you can't bring your dog into the market because they always have signs that say no dogs in the market. And people bring the dogs anyways. Stop it. Anyways, <laughs> from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., Farmer's Market, every single Saturday until Labor Day, pretty much. And this is a – oh, actually, wait. Well, well until October. Yeah. Now, they do this well until October. Why am I saying Labor Day? That's when apples start coming into fruition is – September. It's mm -hmm. like the perfect time for apples and everything. And also August, mid to late August is the pepper season. So it's the perfect time for roasted peppers and they're delicious. Um, Clark Fork River Market, which is underneath the bridge to so, uh, get your troll on. You can go to um, Thomas Mar Bar area, which is where they have the People's Market, where people make knickknacks, jewelry, and art, and you can buy some stuff. And Zula Hoops, I, I believe they, I don't know if they still do that. Um, the Farmer's Market, OG Farmer's Market, which is by the Red X's. And we're right here in the center in the downtown Missoula area. So this is the perfect time to be out and about because the weather is going to be so nice, and it's perfect sweater weather. Um, also starting at Karis Park is a helmet sale. You're looking for some helmets, and this is in collaboration with the St. Patrick Hospital Trauma Services. Missoula Motion will be selling helmets for $8, and it's going to be at the Clark Fork River Market from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. selling helmets. There's the Montana State Woodcarver Show, Missoula Fairgrounds. You like wood carving? You like to hang out there? Why don't you not show up? It's happening on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and again on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., and it's just a uh, Montana Woodcarver Show. They carve wood, they do live wood cutting, they have post wood cutting that you can buy, all sorts of things. It's a judged show, so there are many, many classes offered Saturday and Sunday. So if you want to do some wood, your own wood carving, they'll teach you how to do it. And you can go to their Facebook page, Montana State Wood Carvers. Um, and it's also free admission day at the Missoula Insectarium. Hey, why not? Go check out some bugs. If you like bugs, if you don't like bugs, get used to liking bugs, Missoula Insectarium. <laughs> I'm talking too fast. It's the um, it's my matcha green tea just kicking in. Uh, comic book day. It's comic book day. Muse comics and games. Free comic book day for kids, teens, and adults. No catch. Just free comics. Special guest comic creator will be on site signing and displaying their newest works. Think about it. Saturday open hours at Moon Randolph Homestead. They're kicking their uh, their Saturdays off um, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's open. It's open space. If you are a taxpayer here in Missoula, you own this property. This is Missoula Moon Randolph Homestead. You can go there anytime. You can see their barns, their uh, homestead, all sorts of wonderful things. And it's very well kept up by uh, the people who keep it up. And it's, it's really cool because here's the deal, Josh. If you uh, work with uh, Morgan Valiant through the city of Missoula, you can actually live there for free. All you have to do is be a caretaker of the Moon Randolph Homestead, and you basically get to live there for free. Nice. And that's it. That sounds like a good deal. Yeah, and it's usually like a year or two-year commitment. And, you know, it's just how it works. And, but you do have to give tours. Part of it oh. is that you have to give tours to people who are interested. And it's a facilitation. But it, it, it's, it's like it's free rent. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like you can still work and do your thing. But that's what they do on Saturdays from 11 to 5, this yeah. kind of deal. But even in the winter, there's not much going on. So you really don't have to work that hard in the winter. So think about it. I will. Yeah. Maybe uh, you and your band can go there and just live there for a year and just be like a, a Moon Randolph Homestead band. That would be cool. That actually would that, be really That cool. sounds like good. I'll, I'll do the that, too. I, I don't know if I'm that good at, like, you know, ye old homestead work. Yeah, it really depends. I mean... I can chop a wood. Yeah. But not much else. Yeah. But anyways, that's kind of the deal. If you're kind of like a homestead and you want to kind of live that old kind of lifestyle and you want to give that kind of commitment, you can contact this city at any time. Uh, Saturday drop-ins, every Saturday until May 18th. So we have about three more weekends of Saturday drop-ins. It's $10 per kid, uh, $5 for half days. And, of course, if you have a siblings, it's $15 for siblings. So it's you know $10 for the first kid, $5 for the second kid. And if you have a third kid, it's still $15. Wonderful opportunity, and it's at Saturday drop-ins at MCAT from 1 to 5 p.m. Your kid must be 9 to th uh, 13 years of age, and they must have some concept of knowing how to use a computer. I'm just saying. Um, they have to be fairly self-reliant, and, you know, this is, this is an activities-based drop-in service uh, for the community. So, yeah. And also, I want to mention that MCT's Newsies will be playing um, matinee shows and shows pretty much all week long, this weekend and next weekend. And if you... Uh, have a family member with autism, 
they have an autism spectrum show happening May 8th, which is next Wednesday. And it is a great opportunity for uh, people who feel, feel as though that their, uh, their kids are not suitable for, I don't know, this, it's a hard way to kind of like talk your way through this, but it's like if you feel like your, uh, your kid would be anxious and has a high anxiety, would not, does not work well with large crowds of people, then this is kind of like the place to be at this particular time with a very uh, low-keyed version of the play Newsies. Nice. Yeah. Bingo. Dismet School is raising money. It's called Bingo Night Fundraiser, and you can check out the Facebook page, Dismet Booster Club. The roast of Christina Drake. Hey, you like uh, drag queens? Now you get to watch a drag queen get completely and utterly roasted. The most hated empress of all of Montana, Christina Drake, has become a beloved, no BS icon of ISCSM, but those closest to her have other um, things to share about her. Um, join the... Uh, the group and friends as they roast Christina Drake enjoy some laughs and at Christina's expense. The doors open at uh, um, 7.30. The show is at 8.30. It's $5 and it's 18 and up. So it's wonderful. They, uh, drag shows are always great in Missoula and they've been only getting better and better every time. Yeah. I feel like we should do a roast. You want to do a roast? Yeah. Let's do a roast of you. <laughs> Let's do a... Got ramp roast. Uh, ramp roast? Yeah. <laughs> ramp roast. Yeah. Or the ramp roast. Like, nobody is like, who, who the hell's ramp? You could do a cook roast. I'd be up Sorry that. about the language, but it's like, <laughs> people are probably be like, who the heck is this guy? Who the heck? Who, who, what's, what's this stuff? What's, yeah, I, what's this stuff? What's this stuff? What's the name of that movie? Um, Miami Connection. Yeah. Miami Connection is a gem. You have to watch the whole thing to really really feel the utilization. What's, Do it. What's this stuff here? Huh? What's this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I have to kick extra high because this monitor is in the way. Yeah. And no, don't worry. I won't I, hurt I myself. I'm pretty flexible. That. That's a great scene. It is a, a wonderful scene. Like, yeah. the, the sub-characters in that movie are the funniest people. And I, I'm pretty sure that they're that they audio camera production crew that just jumped on camera. That's great. Plus, there's a, a, there's a scene where, like, they're all, like, bikers and they're all hanging out. And it's like, What's with this nudity that just happened to pop up in this movie? Because it's a very wholesome and wonderful movie, and, but then there's this like, nudity just like popped in there. Typical yeah. 80s. Like, um, if you ever watched uh, The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing in the 80s, there's nudity, and the movie's rated PG-13. Yeah. And you know, like Ghostbusters and stuff. It's, it's kind of like, you know, Spaceballs. Spaceballs was rated PG. It's just... Even though it's like clearly like PG-13+. plus. 80s movies were all about gratuity, you know? Yeah, they love that nudity. Yeah. Like Weird Science had nudity, and it was PG. Jeez. Freaking 80s. I know, right? I mean, it was great, but like also like, you know... No, it wasn't that great. There, there was some good... Yeah, the, being nostalgic is okay, but you can never truly go home. Uh, yeah. That is true. Well, I never... And on that somber note, we're, we're going to wrap things up on the morning show. I want to thank uh, Hayden Groats from Washington Children's Shelter for joining us this morning. And I want to thank Josh for uh, playing this morning as well. Do you want to uh, play us out? Sure. Yeah. Let's, let's give you a nice extended play out for this because we have plenty of time. Right. Um, so without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Here's Josh Cook.